Hello, welcome to Resale Coder. In this tutorial, we're gonna add an iResetable interface and also do a cleanup of the project. This means we will fix some bugs which were accumulated in the last few parts and we will also make the UI a bit nicer here and there. But first up, let's repair this multiplayer toggle. Currently, it's not persistent. This means that when I go to play the game, I can tick that multiplayer should be on. And now let's click on play here. Let's say that I am going to win, so let's score two goals. Alright, and now let's go back to the menu. And as you can see, multiplayer is turned off by default. But when we click on play game again, the multiplayer is still turned on even though there was no check mark on that toggle. We need to fix this. So let's go to scripts, menu scene and menu manager. Let's add one using statement and it will be using unity engine.ui. All right, and now let's add one field public toggle and it's gonna be called multiplayer toggle. Alrighty, and now let's add start method. And here we wanna write multiplayer toggle dot is on. And we need to set this to some kind of a persistent variable. Luckily enough, we have already added such variable into our game. We made it when we were creating local multiplayer. So now we can just write game values dot is multiplayer. And we should be all set. So let's test this out. But actually, before we test it, we need to go to the scene manager. And here we have a field multiplayer toggle. So let's click on canvas and let's drag multiplayer toggle over here. And now when we click play, I turn the multiplayer on. When we go back to the menu, the multiplayer is gonna remain turned on, which is amazing. Next up, let's fix a problem with resetting the position of our players and the puck. Currently, when we play the game and we go to play multiplayer, when we tap the restart button, we are gonna get a null reference exception down here. And it's at AI script line 75. That's because we are trying to reset the position of AI. But since we are playing multiplayer, there is just no AI. We can fix this by adding an iResetable interface. Because we need to reset the position of AI script as well as two player movement scripts and also the puck script, we want to have a list of all objects which we want to reset the position on. This is a much better approach because again, if you have more players throughout the game, you can just add them to the list and the resetting of the position is gonna be automatically done for you. And because we want to have them inside a list, we need to have those classes implementing an interface. So let's go to scripts and types and create a new C-sharp script. It's gonna be called iResetable and let's open it up in Visual Studio. We can delete all of this and we want to create a public interface, iResetable, and this interface will contain just one method returning void, and it's gonna be called ResetPosition. Now we want to implement this interface inside Puck Script, AI Script, and Player Movement. So let's click here on Assets, Scripts, Main Scene, and let's open up Puck Script first. It's gonna be implementing an interface, so iResetable. And we already have a method to reset the position of the puck. But it's not called reset position. It's rather called center puck. So let's rename it. Here it is. So we want to call it reset position. Cool stuff. But now we are getting an error. That's because we were already calling this center puck method. But since we are going to change how we reset the position anyway, we can just safely ignore this error for now. Now let's go to AI script. And it's also going to implement high resettable interface. And here we actually don't need to do anything because this class already contains a method called reset position right here. And we want to do the same thing with player movement. So implements I resetable. And this class also contains a method called reset position already. Now let's go to UI manager. And here we want to delete any references to puck script, player movement and AI script. We want to add a list instead. It's going to be public list of generic type I resetable. We need to be using a proper namespace, so just press control dot and then enter. It's gonna be called resettable game objects and let's set it equal to new list i resettable. Now let's scroll down and here we have a method restart game. We can delete these three lines and add a for each loop and for each var obj, so object, in resettable game objects, we wanna call a method on obj and the name of the method is reset position. 
what we want to do now is to add an instance of a script to this resettable game objects list and we want to add an instance from each script which implements our resettable interface. But before we can do that we need to make sure that we can access this resettable game objects list from other scripts as well. The most elegant and simple way to accomplish this is by using a singleton. So let's go up here and create a region singleton just so this is nicely separated and this will be kind of a simple non-persistent singleton. If you want to learn more about singletons, even those which will persist through many scenes, check out my tutorial by clicking on the card in the corner. But now let's add public static UI manager. This is gonna be a property and it's gonna be called instance and it's gonna have a public getter and private setter. Alright, and now void awake and here we just wanna set instance to this. Now we can go to pack script, find the start method and we want to add an instance to resettable game objects list located inside UI manager. So let's write UI manager dot instance dot resettable game objects dot add and we want to add this and this just means this particular instance. Now let's go to AI script and we want to do pretty much the same thing. So let's go to start method and we just want to write UI manager dot instance dot resettable game object dot add and let's again add this. And now the last script, player movement, but here we don't want to add an instance inside the start method. Let's do it in unenable instead. So UI manager dot instance dot resettable game objects dot add this. And as you can see here, we are adding this current instance to player controller dot players. And inside the undisable method, we are removing this instance from the players list. Let's do the same thing with resettable game objects. So let's write UI manager dot instance dot resettable game objects and we are gonna remove this current instance. This will ensure that we can add players and remove players and we are not gonna get any errors. You could do the same thing inside AI script and Puck script if you wanna have multiple AIs or Pucks. It's really all up to you. Alright, and now let's go back to Unity and let's play this game. And when I turn the multiplayer on, we are actually gonna get an error saying that object reference is not set to an instance of an object. So let's double click on this and the error is right here inside on enable. Let's attach this to Unity, put a breakpoint over here and let's play the game again. So I'm gonna turn the multiplayer on and play the game and we just hit the breakpoint. So let's see what is null. So as we can see, the UI manager dot instance is null. This happens because unenable runs sooner than the awake method inside UI manager script. Because now we hit this breakpoint and when we go to the UI manager script and put the breakpoint over here, when we click on continue and one more time, only after that this line of code will run. We can fix this by going to the unity editor and now click on edit, project settings, script execution order and let's click on plus, we want to select UI manager and let's put it before the default time. We want to click here on apply or we can also click here and now when we click play again, we can turn on multiplayer and click play and we are not gonna get any errors which is totally amazing. Hit restart and we are not gonna get any errors again. Positions of both players and the puck are reset without one single error. Let me win this game, go back to menu the multiplayer is still ticked on, we can now turn it off and let's play again. And let's hit restart and we are not gonna get any errors again. That's cool, but isn't this play button a bit uh, ugly, you know? Let's change this green atrocity to something nicer. So let's click on play button and the source image here should be Puck. So let's go to project, art and let's drag Puck over here. We wanna change its color to be white. And we also need to change the color of the text. It's gonna be a whitish color. We also need to bump down the font size and we are almost good to go but let's go back to play button and let's change the highlighted color to have a bit less opacity and the press color will have also much lower opacity. Maybe not so much, something like this. Now when we click play, the game feels just much better. Do you want to finally find a good calculator for your Android smartphone? Download OneCalc, the simple scientific calculator made with you in mind. 
Customize it to your liking. Choose from lots of beautiful material themes and most importantly, save time. Be efficient. Use OneCalc. Get it on Google Play from the link in the description. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. In the next part, we are gonna add easy, medium and hard difficulties for the AI. Also, the next part will be kind of a wrap up to this series. But even after the next part, we will have some things to do. We will publish this game on Google Play. So if you don't wanna miss those videos, subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button. And thank you so much for watching this tutorial and if it helped you, please give this video a like and also share it. If you wanna get the code from this tutorial, go to the link in the video description, which will take you to resocoder.com. If you have anything to say, leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.